Welcome to the Certificate 2 in Animal Studies presentation for TAS-TAFE 2022. My name is Annette and I'm delivering today's presentation. I'm the coordinator for the Animal Studies programs based out of the Allen Vale TAS-TAFE campus. Today, we are also joined by Sonia, who's moderating our Q&A. Certificate 2 in Animal Studies is a general qualification for entry into sectors of the animal care and management industry, where workers provide care for animals in workplaces such as animal shelters, kennels, catteries, sanctuaries and veterinary clinics. As an entry level qualification, work takes place under direct supervision within clearly defined guidelines for work activities. Throughout the course, you will gain skills to undertake a job role as an animal care attendant, animal shelter attendant, kennel hand, cattery attendant, pet shop attendant, or assistant dog groomer. Throughout the course, you will learn about animal behavior, handling, nutrition, health, grooming, housing, first aid, and communication. You will learn about career and study options within the animal care industry, safe work practices, hygiene and infection control, workplace communications, and products and services for commonly housed animals. If you enroll as a campus-based student, you will learn through knowledge and discussion with the support of printed and digital resources, primarily through Canvas, our online learning portal, presentations, videos, and learning activities. We offer dual delivery of theory sessions. That is, you will be able to join live online or come into the classroom. Discussion is a large component of our learning program, so attendance to live online or in-class sessions is an essential part of your learning as a campus-based student. Hands-on training is completed in the classroom with a range of practical learning activities and caring for the animals who visit or stay in the classroom throughout the year, including dogs, cats, rats, parrots, poultry, fish, guinea pigs and more. Just like in a real work environment, students are responsible for the animal's care throughout the course. You will also be required to complete work placement throughout the course unless you are already employed in industry. More on that later. Face-to-face -face attendance on campus is required for timetabled practical days. We invite a range of guest speakers and presenters throughout the course covering topics ranging from wildlife and animal welfare through to veterinary medicine. If you are already volunteering or employed in the animal care industry, enrolling into the Certificate 2 in Animal Studies qualification as a workplace-based student may be an option for you. You will continue to learn while working in your normal role and complete study in your own time. Your assessor will visit you in the workplace for practical assessment and some on-campus days will be required for assessment where animals or facilities do not exist within the workplace. You will need to negotiate this with your employer. You will have access to all of your course materials through Canvas, our online learning portal. You will have the opportunity to join live online classes for a number of units and access to online study sessions with your assessor throughout your enrolment. Students may choose to complete the workplace based option over one to two years while working for a minimum of 15 hours per week in industry. A total of 12 units will be chosen based on your goals within the animal care industry. If you are seeking work or employed as a new employee in the animal care industry, an apprenticeship may be an option for you. Training will be completed on the job as part of your work, with some class days required for assessment where facilities or animals do not exist in the workplace. Qualifications are usually completed over two years of full-time or part-time employment. If this may be an option for you, you should discuss it with your employer or discuss with a job network agency. To aid you in making an informed choice, you are encouraged to complete a self-assessment checklist before enrolling to make sure this course is right for you. 
please think about the important personal attributes and physical requirements that may be necessary for this course, as well as your capacity to attend class and complete study in an adult learning environment. While some requirements of the course may be met with reasonable adjustment once discussed with a disability liaison officer, you will need to make sure that you're able to undertake the tasks required to complete this course. We suggest you complete this self-assessment to help you decide if the course is right for you prior to applying. You can scan the QR code currently on your screen to be taken to an online form, but don't worry, we'll post the link at the conclusion of the information session. Once you have completed the self-assessment, we invite you to apply for the course of your choice. Details on this later. As part of the application process, you will be required to participate in a face-to-face -face interview and complete a questionnaire to determine your capability to participate successfully in the program and assist in identifying any areas where you may require additional support or training. Has TAFE are offering two intakes of Animal Studies Certificate 2 in 2022. Intake 1 will run from February to July and Intake 2 will run from July to November. There will be between two and three class days per week, with the days to be confirmed but are likely to be Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. Classes run from 9am to 3.30pm on scheduled class days. Theory classes may be attended on campus or live online. Class days for practical assessment will be advised in advance and on-campus attendance is compulsory for these. The timetable, including details of on-campus days, will be provided to successful applicants prior to the start of the course. Outside of class time, you will be required to complete 40 hours of work placement in an animal care industry workplace. Work placements are planned by your assessor and may occur during term breaks. You will also need to allocate between two and five additional hours per lesson for self-study, completion of theory work and revisions. For apprentices and workplace-based students, a customised learning plan for the chosen units will be negotiated with the student and or employer at enrolment. Students will have access to digital learning materials via Canvas, our online learning portal, as well as access to live and recorded lessons and classroom based lessons where further knowledge building is required. Assisted study sessions are also offered online and on campus throughout the year. Over the duration of the training contract, students will be visited in the workplace to monitor progress and to gather workplace assessment evidence. During these visits, the assessor will discuss progress with the employer and as the student is deemed ready, observation assessments will occur and workplace testimonials will be completed by the employer. Where appropriate facilities or animals are not present in the workplace, students have the opportunity to attend campus for assessment. For workplace based students and apprentices, we suggest that students allocate a minimum of between 5 and 15 hours of study time per unit. The fee you pay at TASTAFE may vary depending on the level of government subsidy available, the cost of delivery, any previous study you have undertaken and your personal circumstances. The basic fees for Certificate 2 in Animal Studies are as follows. You may be eligible for a subsidised rate if you're a resident of Tasmania or working in Tasmania, are an Australian or New Zealand citizen, an Australian permanent resident, or on a state-sponsored visa on a pathway to permanent residence and are of working age. The subsidised rate for this course is $750. Depending on your personal circumstances and your Centrelink status, you may be eligible for a concession if you are receiving a Centrelink allowance such as New Start, Youth Allowance, Disability Support Pension, a pension, Aus Study or AB Study, are listed on a current Centrelink card as a dependent or have a current healthcare card. To claim a concession, you need to provide evidence for your benefit or allowance at the time of enrolment. The concession rate for this course is $249.98. For more information on fees and payments, visit the TASTAFE website.
applications for the campus-based courses will open at 12 p.m. on Monday the 8th of November. If you wish to apply for the workplace-based study options, you may inquire at any time. To start your application, visit the Certificate 2 in Animal Studies page on our website and click the Apply Now button. However, before applications open, please take a few minutes to watch our Applying at TASTAFE video. This will step you through the process and in preparation of applying, we encourage you to do two things. One, create a TASTAFE student account and two, obtain a unique student identifier. We call them USIs. Details on how to do both along with how to access the support to apply is available in the Applying at TASTAFE video. Once you have submitted your application, please keep an eye on your emails as this is where we will advise you of your interview date and time, the outcome of your application, or if we need any further information. If you need assistance or support during your time at TASTAFE, including during the interview process, please don't hesitate to contact one of our student counsellors or disability liaison officers for help. We offer a range of student services, including support with additional literacy and numeracy, study skills, advice about financial assistance, counselling, disability support and career planning. Call 1300 655 307 to make an appointment or visit the student support section on our website. That concludes our formal presentation. Now let's answer your questions. Annette, thank you for that great presentation. <laughs> thank you. Thank we you very much for sharing <laughs> minor technical difficulties at the start there. <laughs> We've had a question come through um, and the person is hoping to do the certificate two and certificate three consecutively next year. Is that still possible in 2022? Okay, so at present, we won't be offering a certificate three uh, next year. Um, as you may have seen on the website, uh, we no longer have a partnership with Bonnerong, which is where we offered certificate three in the south, uh, and we won't be offering it out of the Allenvale campus at this stage either. So no, you won't be able to enrol consecutively in the certificate two and three at this stage. Uh, we've got another one that's come through. Where do you do work placements? Who organises them and can students choose the animal care facility? Okay, uh, so work placements, I, uh, so they're organised by myself or organised by our staff. Uh, you can indicate what sort of placement you would prefer to have, what sort of animals you would like to work with, what sort of area of industry you're interested in working in. Uh, however, Obviously, if we have a whole class full of people that all want to go to veterinary clinics, we're not going to be able to place everybody at a veterinary clinic. What we do uh, or what I do is make sure that I'm placing students in a workplace that aligns with what they hope to achieve in industry, somewhere where they're going to fit into the workplace culture. That way it benefits both the student and the employer. And they're much more likely uh, to have a favourable outcome. So they're much more likely to potentially gain employment and to gain some valuable experience out of, uh, out of it as well. Okay, next up, we've got a few questions coming through. Wanting to know if the Certificate 2 uh, will be running at all in the South. So at this stage, uh, there is not a campus-based program being offered uh, from the Clarence campus or in the South. Uh, however, as we offer dual delivery for our theory sessions, if travelling is a possibility for students to come up, um, and it would probably be once a week um, for every two out of three weeks for practical sessions at the Allenvale campus, then that's an option. Uh, we do offer on campus student accommodation at Allenvale. So you would be looking at coming up um, once a week or once a fortnight, depending on the timetable. Uh, and I highly suggest that you send us uh, a bit of a question um, to get some further information on that if you think that might be an option for you. Right, ah, we actually do have another question and it's just about, um, someone noticed that there's a workplace option for the Certificate 3 on the website. Is that sort of still going ahead? 
Yes, so if you are already, same as uh, I mentioned with the workplace and apprentice options for Certificate 2, if you are already working or volunteering in industry, the workplace based option may be an option for you. Um, and you could absolutely do that if you are based in the South. Uh, and again, absolutely uh, click on that make an inquiry uh, button if you think that might be a possibility for you as well. And just in line with like uh, when you mentioned about uh, perhaps travelling from the south to study in Launceston, uh, someone yep. was just wanting to know how would that work for the interviews? Um, would you need to come up for the interview or what would happen in that state? No, quite happy to be flexible with that. Um, we can certainly organise a uh, facility if people don't have uh, a webcam and microphone at home where they can visit uh, the Clarence campus and we can conduct an interview like this over Teams. So close enough to face to face. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, we can absolutely do it that way. Nice bit of flexibility there. Fantastic. Oh, and with, uh, someone else has asked, just with the application process, do they need to write a letter of interest or anything like that with the application? No, um, look, if you would like to, uh, you are more than welcome to. Uh, however, uh, once the application's open on the website, you can apply to enrol there. Uh, when you do come to the interview, you're more than welcome to bring a resume. Uh, it won't have any effect on whether you're selected for the course or not, but it does help us get a bit of an idea of who's coming into the course and start getting those work placements organised. And when the applications do open on Monday, is there any time limit for when they're for how long they're open? Um, they will be open until they hit a certain number. Um, I was just checking today how that process works this year and I, I didn't unfortunately get any, <laughs> any direct answers. Having said that, it is a very popular course. Uh, so if you do want to apply, I would apply sooner rather than later. You can always decide, you know, if it gets to Thursday next week and you go, mm, actually, I've found something else I like, you can always withdraw your application before the interview process. And another one is just ask, what is the youngest age you could be to do the course? Oh, um, I think think, and you might even be able to correct me here, <laughs> so I think the youngest age that we can take for campus-based students is 16, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, th there I think be more information yeah. And I think there has to, I think there's, uh, if someone's still studying like year 11 or 12, obviously, um, that's probably a conversation to have with a student council at the school to see what Absolutely. could be done um, through the school itself uh, for that vocational pathway. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really good advice. Um, yeah, generally, um, yes, you do have to have uh, special permission, I believe, and you would need to be enrolled for a full year at TASTAFE um, to do that in place of doing year 11 or 12. Um, and as the course, as the certificate to in animal studies only runs for half the year, essentially, that may not be an option. So yeah, as Sonia said, definitely have a chat to a, a student counsellor either at your own school or um, or contact a student counsellor at TASTAFE for advice. Yeah, our counsellors are great for advice. So definitely recommend giving them a call. Um, and just to, uh, oh, another option here was, do students choose the elective units? Ah, so no, we do offer for the campus based course, we have a set list of elective units and I meant to check to see if the website's been updated to show those. I don't think it has. Um, so if you do specifically want to know what the elective units for the course are, you can send an email through to us at the email address that will pop in the chat very shortly. Uh, and our lovely admins will send you out a course information flyer that has all of the units listed on there. Um, if you enrol as a workplace based student or as an apprentice, you do have a wider range of units to select from so that you can really tailor your course to suit the workplace that you're currently working in. Right, and probably just a couple more. Um, can this course assist in becoming a vet nurse? 
So the certificate two in animal studies is a prerequisite um, for anyone to enrol uh, into the certificate four in veterinary nursing course. TASTAFE don't currently offer the certificate four in veterinary nursing, uh, but there are other RTOs that deliver it to uh, trainee or apprentice veterinary nurses in Tasmania. So it is, yeah, it's a prerequisite for that course. And a lot of students um, who are interested in veterinary nursing, they start out in the certificate two and then uh, move on into uh, a kennel hand or attendant or assistant job in, in a veterinary clinic and go on to uh, enrol as an apprentice later on. Okay. And then I guess we've got someone here who, you know, studied uh, animal studies before, but didn't get to complete the course. So, um, you know, can they get like a credit for the work they've already done or do they have to repeat? How does that work? Yep. Uh, so if you have done some animal studies before and you have completed full units, that is you have a statement of attainment or some other record of completing those units, we do what's called a credit transfer. Uh, so you won't have to repeat assessment for those units. You can, of course, att still attend the theory, get a bit of a refresher. Uh, if you haven't completed full units, then you have a couple of options. You can apply for recognition of prior learning or recognition of current competency. Uh, but we, in that case, would be doing either an assessment only or you would need to provide workplace evidence um, to demonstrate your competency, or you can simply re-enroll in the units and again, do it as a bit of a refresher, depending on the individual circumstances. Okay. Well, that appears to be all that has come through at the moment. Uh, actually, just having a look here, here's, um, do you care, if, um, and also this kind of cover, is it the care for fish? Yep, so uh, we one of our electives for the campus based uh, course is the specialty unit for provide basic care of freshwater fish. So you do learn a bit, a little bit. Well, there's a whole unit <laughs> you learn about caring for um, for fish uh, in either a home or um, an animal care workplace environment. Uh, so something something a little different that most people have had <laughs> had animals um, in their in their life and, and not really learnt the, the uh, in-depth version of how to care for them. So it can be a very fun unit. Yeah. And let's have a look here. Okay, so someone's just said here, it says the 8th of November that applications are open, but I thought I heard the 12th. Ah. Okay. <laughs> no yeah, so 8th, 8th of November is correct at 12 p.m. So at lunchtime on the 8th of November. So you definitely heard it 8 and a 12, but not quite in the format you thought. <laughs> um, and I can see a couple of people, how long mm -hmm. are applications open for? Um, yes. Basically, they're open until we've got a certain amount of applications so that we know that we've got at least enough people to interested to fill the course and then they will close. Um, as I you will then go on to um, a waiting list and you'll still have the inquire now button sitting there. But as I said, it, it does tend to be a very popular course. So if you think you're interested, get that application in um, as soon as you can. You can always withdraw it uh, later on if you change your mind. Ah, and there's actually another great question here. How many hours a week should you put aside for study? Absolutely. So yeah. there will be at least one theory day per week. Um, and we do suggest, depending on the student and depending on how you learn, how you retain information and how much prior knowledge you have, it might be um, between two and five hours on top of your lesson. So whether you do that at the end of the day after a lesson or whether you dedicate another day to study. Uh, and you will also need some time after practical days. So if you're having two to three days per week of class, you'll need anywhere between four and 15 hours, um, depending on how many days a week there are and, and how you, uh, what your study skills are like and your, your knowledge retention and that sort of thing. Uh, and again, oh yeah, just another a question about uh, just someone wanting to check that they that they have got longer than the eighth to apply for the course. And I guess this is about um, 
how long the course may take to fill. Isn't isn't that right? So they open from the eighth. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. They open the applications open from the eighth. Um, depending on how much interest there is, they we might be able to accept applications for um, a day, or it might be a week, or it might be a month. Um, we we don't know <laughs> until the applications open. Uh, I do recall last year they did fill very quickly. Uh, I think at the end of the first week we had something like 90 applications, uh, and there are 25 places in the course. So the sooner the better. Um, if you're if you are interested, try and try and get it done that day. Um, but you can always add an inquiry later. And of course, if spaces become available, we don't just reopen applications and start again. We keep moving down the list. That's correct. OK. Now, another one would be ah, the physical requirements. So, you know, what do you need to be fit or what's involved in that space perhaps? Yeah, you certainly don't have to be a runner or a track star, um, but working with animals, uh, there is some lifting, there is some bending, and a lot of working with animals, <laughs> even if you're a, a veterinary nurse or a veterinary surgeon, is cleaning. Uh, so bearing that in mind, and if you do have any, uh, any physical limitations, whether that be um, a permanent or a temporary condition, definitely consider that before applying. Um, potentially even book a, uh, an appointment to have a chat with one of our disability liaison officers uh, to see what sort of accommodations we can make for you. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what I said, what I um, was alluding to when I said about, you know, making sure that you can actually do what's involved. If you can't um, lift or hold uh, even a small animal, that's something that we need to be able to assess you on as being either competent or not competent to complete the course. Okay. Um, someone's asked here, is it required, um, I think, like to do a certificate two before you can do the certificate three? So it's not the, um, there's no prerequisite to do a certificate two before you do a certificate three in animal studies. However, at this stage, we're not offering a campus based certificate three next year. Um, if you are working or volunteering in industry and you're looking at going directly into a certificate three, you can certainly do that. Great. And this one is, ah, is there, um, a horse unit, like someone who's here is wanting to get more into um, chiropractor for horses. Is this the type of course that can assist into that sort of pathway? Look, it, it could be. Um, I'm not 100% sure on what the pathways are into that at the moment, but you're more than welcome to send us an email and I can look for some more information on that for you. Um, the certificate two in animal studies is very broad uh, and gives you some basic skills across all areas of the animal care industry. So they're definitely transferable skills, learning about anatomy and physiology uh, and about animal behaviour and general handling principles. Mm -hmm. And it can certainly give you a bit more confidence that that might be the area that you do want to move into. So this is this entry pathway. This yeah. helps, yeah, that foundation, yeah. And OK, that is all of the questions that appear to have come through at the moment. Is there anything you wanted to, to reinforce from today, perhaps? Or um, I did. I did see one one other little question oh, come yes. through there. How many lessons are there a day? Um, so classes, so the theory classes run from 9am to 3.30. Um, the each sort of, you do get a morning tea, a lunch time and an afternoon tea break. I don't drill into you the whole time. Um, so the morning session is about 90 minutes. Uh, and then there's another, uh, I think an hour and 15 minute session and then an hour and 15 and then an hour and a half, I think in the afternoon that might change slightly next year, but I make sure that there's enough time for 
people to have a breather, pre people to have a bit of a brain break, uh, a break from the computer if they're studying at home, and also some time to catch up with me if they have any questions as well. Uh, and the practical days run on a fairly similar schedule. That's a good timetable. <laughs> Right. Okay. Excellent. We've had lots of questions this evening. We have had some wonderful questions come through. Got some very uh, eager potential students, so that's great. I guess someone here is looking at uh, more into that veterinary uh, certificate for in veterinary uh, nurse. Yep. Uh, again, they're just looking at doing the certificate three before going on to certificate four in veterinary nurse. Yep. So the certificate three isn't a prerequisite for the certificate four in veterinary nursing. The certificate two is. Um, however, some students do choose to go on and do a cert three in the workplace before they go on to do veterinary nursing. Very much depends on what job options are available at the time and uh, and whether vet clinics are employing or not. Mm. OK. And again, something probably more to do with the timetable there is our classes sort of held every day, I guess, is that um, your timetable, I guess, um, it's compulsory to attend scheduled classes. Yeah, so we have two to three class days per week. Uh, mm -hmm. We're yet to finalise that. Normally it would be um, one to two theory days per week and then one practical day per week. Um, for, for the student group. Um, as I said, those will be to be <laughs> advised at the sure. moment. Um, yep. But yeah, likely to be Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. Not every day of the week, um, but it is still considered to be a full time course. OK. And I saw one just back a little bit, accommodation options if travelling from the south. We do have student accommodation available on the TASTAFE Allenvale campus. It's quite affordable. Um, I'm not sure of the current pricing, but I'm sure that information is available on the website. Um, alternatively, the email address that will pop up in a moment, you're more than welcome to send an email through and we can give you some more information on that too. I will put that email address through now for everyone in our little chat panel. Perfect. I'll pop the next yeah. slide up and put it on there too. <laughs> Reinforce how people can contact you. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, um, we might do a final call for questions then, uh, Sonia, if you're happy to sure. that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it looks like, uh, uh, is the course approved for Centrelink? Yep, so uh, the Cert 2 in Animal Studies is considered to be a full-time equivalent. Um, having said that, it's definitely a question better asked um, to Centrelink rather than us. Um, I, I certainly have had some students, oh, most students do not have any issues um, with Centrelink uh, and uh, job network agencies approving enrolment in the Certificate 2 as a um, uh, participation, but some students get the feedback that it, it isn't. So that's definitely a question for Centrelink directly. Yeah, agree. It's always best to check with Centrelink uh, and the agencies to see if it suits their activity uh, test requirements. Yeah. And that is all that has come through. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, the webinar recording will be published on the website uh, shortly. I'm going to guess tomorrow at this point. <laughs> tomorrow morning, first up. <laughs> Well done. And uh, absolutely, if you have more questions, please send them through to hortwine 
www.animalstudies at tastafe tas.edu.au and uh, Sonia has kindly uh, popped that email address in the chat for you to screenshot or copy and paste or take a photo of whichever the, you feel most comfortable doing. That's it. Okay, thank you for joining us today. Wonderful, thank you very much.